Okay, so now let's talk about search expressions, about the components that are used to build them and some of the ways that we can use them. So first we'll start with or. We can build search expressions uh, and string to them together using the connector or. When we use or, the items that we're trying to match can have any combination of the terms. It can have just one of them or it can have any number of the ones that we specify. And also the order or sequence of the terms don't really matter. Both in the search expression, we can say A or B, and we can be looking for B or A, and it doesn't matter. And the search terms and expressions we're looking for can be scattered anywhere throughout the document. So for example, in these results that we see here, we see that some have just one A, some have multiple copies of A, I mean, uh, instances of A in the document, or we can have items that have B as well as B as well as A uh, spread throughout. So a lot of them match. Same thing with A or C or C or A. We see a lot of them match. The only ones that don't are the ones that don't contain either A or C. And similarly with B or C, we have all of these items that match because they either contain a B or a C and the order and doesn't matter where they are in the document, doesn't matter, it can be scattered anywhere throughout. So when we use or, uh, it results in more. A lot of items are returned, so many items end up matching, even though we have multiple criteria. And this brings us to and, uh, which is also another search con uh, connector we can use in our search expressions. But the way the and is used, I think it's appropriate to use an analogy to explain maybe some of the differences or confusions that are used between the grammatical, the typical language usage of and versus how and operates in a database. The way we normally use and, I would say, is like in a lunch analogy. So if I'm really hungry and for lunch, I want to eat a hot dog and a taco and a pizza and a hamburger. That is a lot of food for lunch. So way too much, right? Because each time we're adding and it's more. It's more items for lunch. So you think and means more and it does. But I think the more appropriate way to look at it is to think of it a usage of and and expressions as similar to online dating. So if I create an online dating profile and I'm looking uh, to match with somebody who meets the requirements uh, have who what I'm looking for. So women uh, and likes to take a walk on a beach. So I'm looking for a woman who likes to take a walk on the beach and likes K-pop music and loves to watch K-dramas and drives a four by four and has a PhD and has red hair and speaks Uzbek, uh, the language of the Uzbek people in Uzbekistan. So each time I've added a criteria, there are more criteria, yes, but fewer women actually match those requirements. So what happens is it's becoming increasingly picky. So if you want more, uh, unlike the lunch analogy where I used and to increase what I ate, in databases, if you want more items returned, you would use or uh, to increase. But when you use and, it actually returns fewer items. So you get fewer, fewer things will match because you're becoming increasingly picky. There's going to be a lot of swiping left uh, to find the per person who actually, or persons who actually match and have all of those criteria. So that takes us to and. So like in the online dating example, when we use and in a search expression, items must have all of the terms that you specify in them. So A and B. But the order or sequence of the terms doesn't matter in the search expression or in the document itself. So it can be A and B is the same as B and A. And the uh, B and A or A and B can be scattered throughout the document. It doesn't matter where they are 
whether at the beginning or at the end. So in this graphical representation, again, of a document, uh, we can see that here, uh, A is right next to B, and it's in the middle, somewhere in the middle of the document here, and the one next to it, A and B are separated from each other, uh, but they're more at the beginning of the document. And similarly, when we say A and C, C and A, again, we have uh, these items in the result set are the ones that match because they're the ones that contain both C and A. It uh, doesn't matter about the order. It uh, doesn't matter where it is in the document. And then B and C, these are the examples here in the results uh, that we have uh, that actually match because they have both C as well as B. So and is picky. Fewer items will match, um, far fewer than with or. But even pickier than and are phrases. So what are phrases? Phrases are when we are looking for items that have multiple terms, but they are surrounded by quotation marks. So rather than saying A and B, we say like A, B in quotes uh, next to each other. So this is often used in phrases, like uh, if you're looking for, you know, um, discriminatory practices or racial justice, you might use those terms in quotes right next to each other because you're not looking for items that are scattered throughout where the word racial will be in one section of the document and justice may be another, but you want them right next to each other in that order as racial justice. So items that uh, match must have all the terms. The order and the sequence of the terms matter. They have to be in the, in the order that's presented. And as well, they all have to be right together, not scattered throughout the document. So as an example, we have A, B. So again, we're using A and B as placeholders for the words. And these are the only items that match because they're the only ones that actually contain A, B, right next to each other in that order. These are the, all the other items that have A as well as B, but they're not right next to each other and they're not all in the order. So the green ones match, the pink ones would have matched if we used and, but because we used a phrase, don't match. Similarly, if we have B, A, then these are the only items that actually match B, A, because they have B, A right next to each other in that order. These are the ones that would have matched if we used said B and A. These are the ones that would have matched but didn't uh, because uh, they aren't, they don't match the phrase B, A right next to each other. And then this is the only one that matched B, A, C uh, because it's the only document in, the, in these documents that I have presented here that actually have B, A, C right next to each other in that order. These are the other items that would have matched if we said B and A and C because they contain all of those uh, search the terms that we're looking for, but be, they don't match because they aren't in that order right next to each other. So phrases are super duper picky. So when we, we use phrases, we use them when we're looking for specific terms of art, like, you know, um, uh, race, like I said before, like racial justice or let's say glass ceiling. Uh, so if we use just glass and ceiling, or we didn't specify it as a phrase, then it would return documents that contained a glass ceiling, different parts of the document, uh, not next to each other, could be see a document that had ceiling and then glass. Uh, but if we're looking for a glass ceiling, we would use the phrases that quote quotation marks around it because it's a particular term of art, we specifically want to find that exact example. And you can also use it when you're looking for titles or quotes, things that you know are exactly in a particular order, uh, right next to each other, and then you, you would use the phrases to eliminate false positives and find the exact items that match exactly. So let's talk a little bit about search terms. So what are search terms? Well, search terms are the A, B, C that we've been using in example. But um, sometimes it can be simple. You think, oh, you know, you're looking for whatever it is. You can say racism, discrimination, etc. But there might be terms that are better used uh, that you might be uh, 
looking for that would actually be more accurate. Uh, but that depends on uh, what words are used in a particular subject matter and also what particular words are used in the actual documents that you're searching. So what is this? Well, when we saw it, it looked pretty clear, right? But depending on what, where you're coming from, what you're looking for, as well as what the author was thinking of the articles that you're searching for, they can be different terms. Uh, it could be the glass, it could be the soda in the glass, but if it's a soda, you can also refer to it as cola. You might refer to it as Coke. You might refer to it as Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, root beer. Um, it could be pop, depending on which area of the country you come from, uh, or from a different country. So if you use the term fizzy juice, fizzy juice is a term that's used in Scotland for uh, the uh, carbonated beverages, uh, soft drinks. Um, it could be drink, the beverage, it can be junk food. So maybe you're looking to talk about, you know, different foods that are unhealthy and you're thinking of, oh yeah, soda is not healthy because it has a lot of sugar. Well, it could also maybe an article on junk food could be what you're looking for. Um, or it could have been refreshing because what you're talking about is, you know, slaking your thirst and, you know, the, how a drink is super refreshing. So search terms can be broader or narrower or related to what you initially thought. Uh, just like we saw it was a cola, but we could specify a very specific example of cola. We can say it's Pepsi, it's root beer, it's Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola. Or it could also be um, a broader. It could be not just a cola. It could be a beverage because there are other beverages that aren't cold, um, sodas, right? That are, you know, that could be juice or it could be, you know, tea. And it could be even broader. So you could be talking about food. You can be talking about junk food. Or it could be totally related in that, like the junk food example, uh, you're not talking about a drink itself, but you're talking about a class of foods or items that have a quality like maybe too much sugar or unhealthy qualities. Uh, so maybe that's, those terms would actually be uh, good ones to search for. So that's why you would wanna take the time to think of what you're looking for, think of the different words, the search terms that could be used to express that and capture that, as well as uh, words that are related to what you're looking for that might better capture what you're looking for or might help you find articles uh, depending on which terms and particular uh, terms that authors use. Now, you can't figure out everything ahead of time, um, and there's only so much time you want to spend, you know, planning and thinking of those terms, but there are also tools that we'll uh, show you later uh, that we've talked about, which are the subject headings and the thesaurus, that can actually help you come up with some of these terms that you might not be familiar with already. Uh, but you can start that and use that as a searching point. And again, remember the search filter explore option. Uh, when you do that and you become aware of the tags that are used, um, you can help you discover these different terms that you may not be aware of. Um, so taking notes while you go is a good thing because then there might be certain terms uh, that you might not be aware of because you don't know the area uh, that you're searching, you know, in terms of the, the subject area. And then searchable fields. So remember in databases, uh, uh, there were actually uh, sections where we could tell it to search in different areas of the document. So every document, I'm going to use my bento lunchbox analogy. So a bento box is a Japanese lunchbox, which actually has different sections, like sections of the tray where different food items go. You can actually tell a database <clears throat> to search in only a particular part of the document. So you can tell it to search for A, uh, and B only in the title, or you can tell it to search for, you know, author uh, only for B in author, etc. So here's an example uh, where uh, this this is f the same document, but in the first example, title you're searching for A only. This one will match because A is in title. It's elsewhere in the document, but it's all it's in title. And let's say you were looking for items with title that contains A and author contains B. So here again, it's a match because title contains A and title also contains B. But here you can see that title does not contain C, doesn't match. And here we have title, yes, A matches, but abstract F, uh, there's no F in the abstract, even though there is F in the document text.